All right, so I for uh, I'm jumping on here against my better judgment, wearing a tank top because I know it's coming. But I didn't have a choice. This is how I left the house today, and uh, I'm leaving the office. And I want to give you guys something that I did a video on earlier. So, uh, well, I'll enjoy your comments and they'll entertain me. I'm going to give you information that you can use while at work using Miranda to your advantage to lock up your case rock solid. Now I'm going to talk about Miranda and how to use it to lock up your cases like I did earlier. Uh, and the only reason I deleted that video is because the guy that I mentioned said, could you please not mention me in that video? Sure. So I delete it and make a new one. But I'm also going to talk about a few pieces of case law that are pertinent to New Jersey. But I want the guys in, out of state to know that you can use this too. This is the same principle. I'm just going to quote New Jersey case law. So on a motor vehicle stop, there's a point where you're allowed to read Miranda to, pull it to, to your person on scene. So let's say you search the car. You fe Remember, Miranda kicks in at the point where somebody becomes arrestable for the most part. So as soon as you find a product of what you're looking for, as soon as you find that product, that really attaches to an arrest now. So any questions that you have designed to elicit an incriminating statement from that point forward has to be post-Miranda. So you guys got to get into the habit of reading Miranda. And I read Miranda a lot on motor vehicle stops. I had a Miranda card in my pocket. I would take out and I would read it. So if you find something on somebody, instead of just running over and giving them handcuffs, and put them in the back of the car, shaking them down the whole nine. Stop for a second and breathe. As long as your department's okay with this, and they should be, as long as your prosecutor's office is okay with this, or your, your district attorney's office for the guys who are out of state is okay with this, this is my suggestion. This is something I did all the time, and it really locked my cases up good. People don't know, I actually never went to trial for any drug offenses or drug case that I had. I never went to trial. We had a suppression hearing once. I didn't even get, I didn't even get called in for the suppression hearing. I got to read the transcripts on it and observe, but I never got even called in for it. We won. It's the only time that anything was ever challenged. The only reason that was challenged because there was two handguns involved. The guy was a career criminal, and the Graves Act kicked in. If you don't know what that is in New Jersey, it's guns and drugs uh, in New Jersey, and you get heavy, heavy penalties for it. The guy ended up getting 16 years in prison for that motor vehicle stop. So, of course, in New Jersey, you just have to know that it does, you don't lose anything. It's called something called standing. You don't lose the ability to challenge a consent search. Uh, you don't need to show any reason. You can literally just challenge it to challenge it. But anyway, that's off the topic. Just know that I want you guys to build your cases so they're, they're airtight, they're lock solid. So an attorney reads the report, looks at the video and says, we got a plea out. We're not even challenging this. This guy was good. I had a friend of mine who was an attorney and he would tell me, he's like, dude, when people walk into this office and it's your case, I know you, I just tell him, we're going to have to plea out. We're not going to trial on this. The guy, he, he, he just said they were always just wrapped up so tight. He had no way to squeeze in and, and try to, uh, you know, like pry that thing open and tear it apart and, and, and eat me up on the stand. He just always said, like, you hit my phone. I'm doing it live on my phone. It keeps it ringing. So uh, also, let's talk about this Miranda part, right? So you get somebody, you found your, you did your consent search or maybe you did a PC search. You found your product. Maybe they're being cooperative. Read the Miranda. Hey, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you in court of law. You have the right to an attorney, blah, blah, blah. Do you understand these rights that I've read to you? I would do this on your camera, in front of the camera, with your audio on. Yes, I do. Do you wish to speak with me? Sure, I do. Okay, so I found this here. Um, what is this here? Uh, it's ecstasy. Okay, is it? did you buy this ecstasy? Yeah, how many pills are inside? Why did you buy it? Who did you buy it from? What was your intention to do with it? Get this person to acknowledge that this was something that they knew about and are taking full... Um, you know, you see when people are caught, they just... They'll take responsibility for it. Yeah, it's mine. Uh, so what do you think that looks like when you read them Miranda? And post-Miranda, they got an admission locked into it, too. You don't have to be a detective to read Miranda. Just everybody knows. Now, I don't know if your agency requires you to be a detective to read Miranda. And that could be silly. But you're a police officer. You're allowed to read Miranda. You're a police officer. You're allowed to do search warrants. Um, some agencies don't think that way. Now, also, if there are people in your agency that are criticizing my videos, please find the loopholes. In the things that I'm talking about, and I'll be sh I'll be glad to discuss them with anybody. If there are people who are critics of these videos, I, I really don't care. It makes no difference to me. I really shouldn't be acknowledging this, but I want you to know where your source is coming from, and I will back everything that I have with proper case law, just so you guys know. So I did this stuff, um, and I, I want to implore you guys to do this as well. Now I'm going to read a few cases, and I'll, I'll obviously put the verbiage up in this video, and you guys can go back and, and refer to this later on. All right, so uh, State versus Hickman. 
Ordinarily, roadside questioning of a motorist detained pursuant to a routine traffic stop does not constitute custodial interrogation, necessitating Miranda warnings. That means is a traffic stop is different than being arrested or put in the back of the car or having a station house interrogation or being in, a, in an interview room, right? A traffic stop is presumptively temporary and brief, and thus questioning incident to an ordinary traffic stop is quite different from station house interrogation. Miranda warnings may be needed, however, if the totality of the circumstances surrounding the stop impose a restraint on freedom of the movement of the degree associated with a formal arrest, see State versus Toro. And again, for the guys in, Mar uh, in New Jersey, remember, the odor of marijuana makes the person arrestable, okay, under State versus George Myers. I mean, there, there's no question. We're not going back into that again. I explained it for 10 minutes. I screamed at this friggin' camera. I'm not going back into it again. It is what it is. If somebody smells like weed, they can be arrested. Straight, straight truth. There's no arguing it. I don't give a shit what you say. You want to take it up with somebody, go take it up with the Supreme Court in New Jersey. You tell them that their decision didn't make any sense because, because you think you know what the fuck you're talking about, all right? Or somebody else thinks they know what the fuck they're talking about because they don't. If you believe anything different than that, you're absolutely wrong. All right, so Miranda not needed. Um, let me go back to this a little bit. i got to find the case. I had it right here for a second. Okay, State versus Letman, 1989, New Jersey. This allows an officer after discovery of contraband to question a defendant after having read them their Miranda rights. So, yes, you're allowed to read somebody their Miranda rights and proceed on to wrap that case up, make it a nice little bundle, and proceed forward with that right to, I mean, like, what a great way to show up to your, you know, to court with a confession on your MVR. Really, really good, great tip. You guys should try to use it. If you're not using consent forms, I, I had a talk with somebody yesterday, and he's like, oh, I don't use consent forms. Like, don't be afraid of them, okay? I, when, before we had the overturning of Pena Flores, and even if you had probable cause, you couldn't search a car. Before we had State versus William Witt, we had to get consent for the new guys that are watching. We had to get consent. If I did 100 consent forms, 99 people would sign them. So don't be afraid of them. Don't be scared to ask, especially if you have somebody who is cooperative. My advice to you is, and apparently some moron yesterday said that you never ask for consent when you have PC, which is completely idiotic, but that's okay. Um, we have idiots teaching cops what to do. Uh, it's just frightening. On the phone, my, my, uncle to, uh, my wife's uncle today was an attorney, and we were, just, we were laughing about the stories that I tell him that, that you guys tell me about what your agency does and what you consider case law and how some people believe it doesn't even exist, and we were just cracking up. It's just terrifying, the whole... Uh, the whole thing behind it, like, the system is so screwed. We're just going to get everybody on the same page. And like I said, everything that I talk about here is going to be backed with actual facts and case law. If you don't believe me or the things that I'm saying, take it up with the, take it up with the Supreme Court. Call them. Tell them that they're useless and that the stuff they're doing, the decisions they're making, make no sense and nobody believes them. So uh, I don't know what to tell you, okay? I'm trying to give you guys good tips. I'm not trying to get into quarrels and wars with people. If you don't like what I have to say, then don't use it. But I'm telling you, I've done this stuff. My, myself and several other police officers have engaged in this. If I was running into problems after five years of teaching this, I would have adjusted accordingly. Okay, five years teaching this stuff. Really, no, I haven't heard anything back from anybody that, hey, that wasn't right. You know, you said do that. That didn't work out. What people say is, dude, you saved my case. Dude, you saved my ass. Dude, you saved this. Dude, we found this because of you. All right? Your training. We, we figured this out. We did this. We caught this guy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... It's not, I don't care what people think. I, I really don't. Um, just know that it's legitimate, it's true, and I'm putting out to you for you guys to use it. Whether or not you choose to use it doesn't matter to me. I will continue to train. We'll still keep, we're up to like 95 guys for the, for the Bergen County class coming up. Obviously what I'm doing is, is correct or something's right. But that's today's lesson and uh, another rant from me uh, as, I, as I have to address the haters. But prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Just come in. I'll have a meeting with anybody. Prove me wrong at the things I teach. Because literally, it's verbatim out of case law. Just, just prove me wrong. I'm open to listening. I'm a very humble person. Anyway, have a good night, guys. TreeCopTraining.com. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the subscribe button below. We're going to put a lot of stuff here on YouTube. You don't want to miss any of this stuff. It's all super valuable and can help you do your job better.